Welcome back from that report. Now, sustainable energy is the driver of modern development. Availability of adequate, reliable, sustainable and cost-effective energy is important for the social economic development of any nation. Now, given Nigeria's progress in this regard, it is necessary to continue identifying options for scaling up sustainable energy supply to achieve sustainable development goals in the country. My guest, Michael Alaito, is the co-founder of Power Now Technologies Limited. Many thanks for joining me, Michael. So let's talk about sustainable development um, in Nigeria and all of um, the issues. You know, uh, not too long ago, the nation suffered uh, three uh, power grid collapses in just one week. And uh, analysts and a whole lot of people are saying that uh, we cannot continue like that because um, power is very, very, very significant, you know, in every uh, development of any nation that is. Uh, take us through sustainable uh, uh, renewable energy uh, options that we can actually look forward to as a country because we cannot continue to rely on that only source that we have because it is really, really drawing businesses down. Michael, uh, did you yeah, hear me? I mean, uh, yeah. yes, I can hear you clearly. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, renewable energy uh, at this point is what. Uh, Nigeria needs and even Africa as a whole uh, because at this time is really exceptionally suited for our environment uh, because of some of our unique challenges. Uh, ex example is a, a unique challenge that we have today is the probably the insecurity in, in the north uh, that has made some of uh, the current generating and distributing installations to to be under some security threats and that is actually making over uh 17 sun sunny yeah. shiny states in, in darkness so i mean renewable energy is actually the way to go uh especially when we look at at, at the power of the sun uh an average of 325 days of sunlight in, in in a lot of regions especially in in, in nigeria so uh, it is actually time for for us as as government as as private uh, individuals as companies to to actually start tapping into renewable energy okay uh, so renewable energy is the way to go uh you know you talked about um solar but uh let's talk about uh you know the policies right now in the country and maybe sub-saharan africa do you really think um we have the right policy uh statement and uh, policy thrust to drive um that um level of uh you know supply that we want to see uh in the country uh Presently, no, we don't have uh, uh, the last one of the last uh, events I, I went, uh, which was talking about uh, carbon credits and how uh, companies like us can actually start gaining and start earning in carbon credits. Uh, carbon credit is actually not uh, well placed uh, in Nigeria at the moment, the policies that support it, that, that makes it to for, for, for people who are in the renewable energy space to actually tap into carbon credit actually have not been put into place. Uh, we can also talk about even some of the equipment or some of the uh, renewable energy equipment like uh, solar panels or, or inverters if you if you look at today the, the structure of actually uh, importing some of these equipment is actually not actually there today so in terms of policy we are actually there, there are no policies that are very straightforward that would actually also enable this uh this this sort of energy uh deployment to go at a large scale okay the last time you were here the last time we talked about them um, solar power you know um, one of the concerns that we raised then was that of um costs and um, you know the investment outlay to get that because we're looking at uh, you know energy transition in nigeria because we know what it entails uh with um, gas and gas inconsistency but you know 
would we get to a point where, you know, even the small scale business, I know we had talked about it, but maybe we need to adjust their rate rate, you know, can actually solely depend on these renewable sources that we've talked about because uh, I hear some states that uh, they even have their own in the power, independent power project, but not many of them is looking at uh, maybe solar or thermal or, you know, wind, you know, so, you know, is it as a result of the cost, uh, uh, the cost implication or how can we begin to mitigate against them this high cost in installing or getting to or switching completely to renewable energy? Uh, uh, I mean, the, the last time the Minister of Power mentioned that very soon, uh, based on some legislative bills that have been passed, uh, states in, in Nigeria would now start generating uh, their power. He also mentioned the, the the installations of probably mini grids in some of uh, these states. So yes, uh, I mean, financial constraint is actually a big is a big thing for for solar installation. Uh, the cost of uh, forced implementation is actually very high, but in the long run, uh, the the maintenance cost is is not high it's very low so yes uh the cost is high uh, and that's why governments and private private companies and investors need to start looking at this this position to actually provide uh funds around uh renewable energy and for companies like us that are already into it uh, yeah. where we kind of provide uh, a, a a model of uh, buy now, pay later, uh, helping businesses, helping households to actually uh, pushing the effect of the the upfront cost. So yes, uh, finance is actually a major thing, uh, and it's it's a blocker. Okay, what are the available financing options? I know some stakeholders in the business uh, in the uh, in the renewable energy sector you know have some sort of a financial outlay and the last time i, I even spoke with you, you said that even packages that nigerians can enjoy so that way they don't really have to be so encumbered uh with cost uh, you know what can be done or what have you done in that regard uh i mean what we've done is actually making yeah when when everybody hears renewable energy solar uh, I, there's there's an education gap uh a lot of uh, individuals actually don't even understand how to go about it uh what they what they hear is probably uh see people who have had maybe installations in their building and everything what we are actually doing or what we have actually done is so provide uh, a simple and an access way for for people to understand what their energy needs are and what and what it can actually power uh which is already out there uh the second thing is also to provide easy access to so to to these equipments out there so we've actually provide uh access and affor affordability and actually opened educational gap regarding how to have or what how renewable energy can actually power your business or buy your homes oh, okay still talking about funding because i just feel we need to really get into the nitty-gritty you are a private uh, sector player and the government is actually deeply involved in the power supply generally in terms of um, transmission you know and all of that I'm sorry, in terms of um, generation, rather. So, but do you really think that there's maybe some sort of um, opportunity where the government and, of course, um, the power, uh, the private sector can play, maybe in terms of uh, meeting at some middle ground, so that way uh, there'll be lots of investment and uh, the cost, per se, even for players like you, you know, can be brought to maybe some minimal level? Yes, uh, there's a lot the government can do for, for players like us who are in the renewable energy space. Uh, uh, there, are, there are a lot of uh, energy funds that, uh, that can be granted to some of us uh, for us to, to scale 
uh, mini grids uh, across states and across uh, region. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm somebody in particular that is very interested in in deployment of mini grids in in the northern northern region because of the strong abundance of sun of sun. So yes. Uh, well, we we are seeking or looking at governments uh, helping to uh, allow investors to also come into the country uh, to to look at this space and actually in, in invest heavily on, on on this because we actually can continue with uh, the dependent on uh, full solar energy. Uh, it's actually not reliable and. and Yes, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's 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 really very very imperative for the government to actually come in uh, to to provide funds, uh, so solar solar loans for for businesses, where we can actually come in and and deploy this uh, renewable uh, energy equipment for for them and and their households. Okay, let's talk about an opportunity now that you just really mentioned now, because for quite some time now, the northern part of the country, you know, has been experiencing blackouts due to the same issue that we have talked about in the, you know, at the beginning of the show. Players like you, you know, you talked about the numerous amount or abundance rather of um, solar and sunlight in the north. It's about, what are your plans uh, specifically as regards uh, taking this solar, you know, powered energy to the northern part of the country? Yeah, so, so some of our plans is is actually to uh, start looking looking at build, build, building mini grids uh, in some of these northern states uh, where, I mean, we are actual, actually also very very critical for for businesses of impact, uh, for example, hospitals. Uh, looking at agriculture, uh, so we we intend to go into the space to to build mini grids to, for some of these uh, communities uh, where I mean uh, the 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 national grid is almost absent. So we intend to build mini grids and focus mainly on impact business like like health like hospitals uh, like schools. Uh, I mean the cost of running diesel in some of these hospitals, major hospitals, is is quite high. We've we've had uh, some of them reach out to us for for us to come and install and mm -hmm. actually work together to to deploy this. So yeah, we're looking at building mini grids uh, in, in in the north uh, to actually cushion uh, the the effect of blackouts, especially in the, in those places. Okay, fine. That's that's really um, some cheering news, uh, you know, for the northern part of the country. In as much as we are talking about um, alternative, uh, you know, power supply, renewable energy, so, you know, I, we also talked about um, how Nigerians can be wary of people who may just want to be, you know, do a fast run with them. So, how can Nigerians really protect themselves? So how do you begin to identify, you know, core sources that you can get this, uh, you know? this uh, solar power panel and um, you know getting the right one because they are just like a, a plethora of uh, people who say they are in that particular industry and yet most Nigerians don't get value for money. Uh, I mean, well, well, one of those things we mentioned earlier on is actually uh, policies around this. Uh, I mean, governments can actually ensure that uh, instruments of uh, energy that is coming into Nigeria is actually of high standard uh, and I'm sure that that is currently being done by Sun. Uh, so in terms of quality and quality and quality, uh, I, I, I think uh, we, we are getting there. Uh, for us specifically, we, we ensure that uh, our, our equipment are actually very, very durable. Uh, I mean, an, an average uh, solar panels average lifespan is like 25 years. Uh, nothing is done or, or, or damaged. So, I mean, in terms of quality, I think quality is, is getting better. Uh, but but the policies can policies can actually make it better. Uh, we can actually also start looking at manufacturing some of these things in, mm. in Nigeria. Uh, we uh, ex especially we are looking at doing this i mean because it's 
in turn is going to create more job opportunities. Uh, we are going to have more people in, in that sector that that will be able to maintain and support. Uh, so yes, uh, hopefully uh, we 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 get there. All right, hopefully we'll get there now. So, Michael, as we round off uh, this conversation on renewable energy, now what would your last word be uh, in terms of, um, you know, advice to the players in the industry, uh, government, and, of course, um, Nigerians? Uh, for, I mean, my last word is that uh, uh, Nigeria or Africa as a whole, renewable energy is not is just more than a solution. Uh, it's a pathway for sustainable growth, uh, climate resilience, and and improved quality of life for 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 the millions of people. So we we need to actually go into renewable energy and actually focus on some of these uh, things that I've mentioned for, for us to have a sustainable growth and actually also help uh, our uh, our currency uh, oh. um, to, 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 to have that. So, yes, that, that will be my last, word, last words. Well, thank you so much. I have been speaking with Michael Olaiton, the co-founder of Power Now Technologies Limited, and we've been looking at renewable energy alternative to consistent uh, good power collapses in the country. We do appreciate your time, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. That's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.